Hi everyone, I'm Norm Robillard, founder of Digestive Health Institute and the creator of the Fast Track Diet. Today's topic is how to fix LPR, which stands for laryngopharyngeal reflux. What is LPR? LPR is known as silent reflux because classic reflux symptoms like heartburn are often absent, but it is a form of reflux with the contents from your stomach, including things like acid, pepsin, often bile, and other intestinal contents, travel up the esophagus to the throat, the larynx, the sinuses, eustachian tubes, and can even be aspirated into the lungs. This process can cause a variety of symptoms, including hoarseness, sore or burning throat, having a bitter taste in the, in the mouth, throat clearing or cough, difficulty swallowing, globus, that feeling that there's a lump or something stuck in the throat, wheezing, breathing difficulty, or asthma-like symptoms, and post-nasal drip. Gas, bloating, belching, and heartburn may or may not be present. While some of these symptoms can be caused by other things, such as viral or bacterial infections, smoking, vocal abuse, allergies, pollutions, or other irritants, Chronic symptoms are often the result of persistent reflux. If you suffer from these symptoms on a regular basis, there's a good chance you have LPR. Now, what to do about it? The most recommended treatment is acid-reducing medicines, such as PPIs or H2 blockers. But do these really work for LPR? According to the systematic review entitled Management of LPR with Proton Pump Inhibitors, Data from these trials show that PPI therapy is no more effective than placebo in producing symptom relief in patients with LPR. The same conclusions were also reached in a 2016 meta-analysis on the efficacy of proton pump inhibitors for the symptoms of LPR reflux. And here's another quote. The difference between PPIs and placebo groups in the overall improvement of symptoms in adult patients with LPR was not statistically significant. As a result, the American Gastroenterological Association guidelines for GERD recommended against the use of acid suppression therapy for treatments of patients with extraesophageal GERD symptoms, in other words, laryngitis and asthma. I'll add some references on this. So what's wrong with these medicines? Why don't they work better than placebo? The most likely reason is that they only reduce stomach acid and have no effect on pepsin, bile salts, bacteria, and pancreatic enzymes, all potential components of reflux that are perhaps more damaging than stomach acid. PPIs also work against you because they can promote SIBO, a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, according to some studies. And it's the gas pressure from SIBO that I have proposed as the underlying cause of reflux. I discuss this in another video called How to Stop Reflux Beyond Trigger Foods for GERD. To address LPR, we must control reflux itself. And why is that? And is there evidence that this works? Yes, there is. Surgically stopping reflux via a fundoplication operation resulted in a 73 to 83% improvement in voice fatigue, chronic cough, choking episodes, sore throat, the lump in the throat, throat clearing. Even asthmatic symptoms improved 60% according to another study. Now I'm not recommending these surgical procedures that tighten the uh, LES as a first line therapy due to the risks and potential side effects. But this is a proof of principle that stopping reflux is the key to controlling LPR symptoms instead of blocking acid. So, how do we stop reflux for LPR without drugs and without surgery? Could food have something to do with this? There are a couple of diet approaches often recommended for LPR. One is the trigger food diet and the other is a low acid diet. Both of these are the same as the approach used for GERD. Use of the trigger food approach is pervasive but it's been debunked by the American Medical Association's continuing medical education program. Here's a quote. Routine global elimination of foods that can trigger reflux is not recommended for the treatment of GERD. I talk a lot more about this in my How to Stop Reflux video. So how about low acid foods? The low acid approach focuses on the stomach enzyme called pepsin. It's made in the stomach and it helps digest protein 
but when it refluxes into the throat and surrounding tissue, its presence becomes inflammatory. Because this enzyme is only active at an acidic pH, the strategy is to avoid acidic foods such as tomatoes, vinegar, fermented or otherwise preserved foods, citrus, certain spices, coffee, soda, etc. because these foods might activate it. While this approach makes rational sense, it does not include an element to control or stop reflux and rather deals with reflux after the fact. Making the picture a bit more complicated, I mentioned that in addition to pepsin, reflux also contains acid, bile, other enzymes, and bacteria. The impact of these elements will not benefit from a low acid diet. So is there any diet approach that is designed to stop reflux? To answer this question, we need to understand the cause of reflux and how it occurs. For the last 60 plus years, the cause of reflux was believed to be that these lower esophageal sphincter muscles, or LES, at the top of the stomach, either becomes weak or relaxes at the wrong time. And I believe this theory is inaccurate or at best incomplete, and I have proposed a different idea in my books, Heartburn Cured and Fast Track Digestion Heartburn. There's solid evidence that reflux is caused by poor digestion of carbohydrates, which just so happen to be the favorite fuel and food of most gut bacteria. When too many carbs are not fully digested and absorbed into your bloodstream, they persist in the intestine and can feed blooms of gas producing bacteria. In fact, only 30 grams of unabsorbed carbohydrate can allow bacteria to produce over 10 liters of gas in the intestines. This gas eventually makes its way back into the stomach. The idea is that intragastric gas pressure puts pressure on the LES, eventually forcing it to open and allowing reflux to occur. Like Mentos in a bottle of Coke. This increased intragastric pressure is well documented in people with reflux. So how do we translate this into an action plan for LPR? Looking through this lens, the sound solution for LPR is to stop reflux by depriving your gas producing bacteria in your gut of excess carbohydrates. And you can do this by limiting these hard to digest but fermentable carbohydrates. These include things like lactose, fructose, polymers of fructose, polymers of galactose, resistant starch, fiber and sugar alcohols, with the exception of erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that's not fermentable and it is gut friendly. The fast track diet I developed is designed to accomplish this. The fast track diet systematically limits the full spectrum of hard to digest but fermentable carbohydrates in your diet. Based on food type and serving size, each food or drink is rated by a point system I created called FP for fermentation potential. The lower the points for each food and drink, the lower the symptom potential. The Fast Track Diet mobile app makes it easy to implement the diet. It lists over 1,100 foods based on their FP points. It also has a built-in calculator to determine the points of other foods as well and you can track your meals, your FP points, and your symptoms in the app so that it will automatically chart the relationship between your points and your system, your symptoms. You can read the Fast Track Diet mini chapters in the app before starting the diet so that you know how it works. Uh, gut friendly behaviors and practices are part of the system as well as a means of identifying and addressing underlying causes that are specific to your case of LPR. For more information about the Fast Track Diet, you can read the Fast Track Digestion Heartburn book, which also applies to LPR. For questions and support, you can join the Fast Track Diet Facebook group. For individual consultation, you can reach me directly through digestivehealthinstitute.org. One final note, LPR is a subtle but persistent irritation that will take some time to heal even after you stop the reflux. It can take several weeks to several months for full resolution of these symptoms. So if you like this video, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching until next time.